Hi guys, uh, thank you for joining in. Just to check that I'm clear in terms of my, you know, my, my, my voice and my video, can I request somebody to give a thumbs up or, you know, of course, mention that, uh, that am I clearly audible? Can you please confirm that before I really take it on and move further? audible sir all right thank you guys thank you very much if possible uh, you know and this, that's the humble request that i have for all this is a uh, this is a video call and i would uh, appreciate if you can switch on your cameras because that would help me understand who you are and you know uh, it's it's more like a face to face interaction that really helps so i would request all of you to please switch on your cameras that's something uh, very important and uh, I look forward to that too. Uh, all right, moving on guys, uh, in terms of you know, what we intend to cover in the financial reporting orientation, um, in terms of you know, what we would be covering, I would uh, come up with a slide now in terms of you know, the, what, I, what I have in store today from the standpoint of coverage. Can you guys see my screen in terms of, you know, uh, can you guys see in terms of, you know, what is being shown over here? Can anyone please confirm that? Are you able to see my screen? Yes. All right. Good. Thank you. So, uh, you know, just to, uh, you know, uh, to start in terms of, you know, what I intend to cover. Uh, I certainly want to deep dive into, into the syllabus areas for the financial reporting and of course the IFRSs that are covered by the September 22 20, and June to June 23 uh, course curriculum. We'll go through that. I'll give a quick glance in terms of you know what uh, the overall syllabus area looks like and of course the topics that are broadly covered in that. I do want to spend some time in terms of uh, taking you through uh, what examiner expects from the capability standpoint as to what the capability should be uh, for whosoever who is giving this exam, they should really know that this is what the examiner really expects that uh, you know, from them. And I've taken that from the ACC website in terms of you know, what ACC has been categorically mentioning it over there, that this is what they reasonably expect. We'll move on to the exam pattern and the format afterwards. I'm sure you know some of you who are already uh, registered with us and have gone through our sessions, they would have already noticed it. But I just wanted to give a uh, loud shout out in terms of you know how the overall exam pattern looks like and so on and so forth. Then you know I, I you know uh, the best practice sharing in the CV exam demo. Um, not sure if we can cover in the orientation, but this is very well covered in our sessions. So you know I would humbly request all of you to go through that in terms of you know what these areas would be. Moving on, uh, you know, we uh, before I really jump on onto the syllabus area, one thing that uh, that 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 has been imperative for all of you who are joining us for the first time and who are seeing me for the first time, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Pankaj Dhingra, and I'm a qualified chartered accountant and a CPA from US. Uh, I've been working with various corporates, including uh, some of the names like Cargill Foods, Wipro, uh, BlackRock, and off late, I I was the head of finance for for you know Boston Consulting Group. Uh, I have been um, uh, very closely knitted with uh, you know with with the, with the students across the globe as far as the chartered accountancy is concerned, CPA is concerned, or ACC is concerned. Um, I'm the lead faculty for the financial reporting and of course strategic business reporting when you would go on to the professional level and of course with the diploma in IFRS if you really intend to do that. So you would see. Uh, me over there also in terms of taking you through as to what you really need to know from the standpoint of various IFRSs. Now that's pretty much about me in terms of you know what uh, you know what I have been doing and what I have been into over, over the last two decades, if I may say that. Uh, just to give you um, a brief uh, before we really jump on onto the onto the syllabus areas, financial reporting is is one of the most um, I would say. Uh, uh, I would say interesting exam of, of ACCA because this actually tests your, your uh, practical abilities in terms of dealing with the accounting issues. And you know, if you compare it with all other subjects of, of ACCA, you would find financial reporting to be more close to your heart 
because you would have seen accounting in your graduation, in your class 12th. And of course, if you're doing any professional course, then you would have seen the, the financial reporting over there too. Because if you're doing the chartered accountants in India or elsewhere, you would have somewhere at some point in time, you would have uh, touched accounting and reporting in some, some shape or format. You would have already seen that. The essence of the ACCA financial reporting exam also remains to be the same wherein the intent is that you should be able to understand um, the IFRSs on the, on the whole in terms of you know, what the international financial reporting standards are all about. Uh, intent is that you should be able to uh, do accounting basis that, do reporting basis that, and of course, uh, you should be able to interpret and analyze basis that. That's the overall intent of the financial reporting exam. And that's what uh, you know, we, uh, we, I would say live in day in and day out when we do and when we, when we deep dive in, in, in the syllabus areas in our sessions, because we really want you to be prepared for in terms of, you know, what is expected from you in the exam when you'll be handling this there and then. Now, important piece to know over here is, and this is something I want to give a special call out for all of the chartered accountancy students in India, because many of them, many of them, since they have somewhere done the accounting and of course somewhere done the NDAs, uh, they at times feel that you know everything that is there in the IFRS is, is going to be a cakewalk. So let me uh, give a showstopper to that and let me uh, you know uh, somewhere give you a shocker to it that while it's going to be an easy ride for you because you would have already have the base of what you would have done elsewhere but you still have to devote good amount of time in terms of understanding these IFRSs and the overall modality with which this, these, these IFRSs really operate. So uh, while I'm not trying to demotivate you that you would not be able to do it, all I'm trying to say is that do not undermine the importance and the depth of the IFRSs, what you intend to cover or what you have to cover in financial reporting. Do not undermine that because IFRSs of course, have their own depth and have their own ways uh, of doing things. And you really have to learn that. You may have to unlearn something and may have to learn this to really be there and kill this exam in the best possible way. And that's how we have structured our sessions wherein we have ensured that any prior knowledge is duly taken care. Of course, the benefit that you may, may have is that you already know the concept, we'll capitalize on that. You, that will certainly be helpful to you. But at the same time, where we, this is different, it is different and you have to learn that. So what we've done is that we've ensured that students from all of the background, be it BCom background, be it Chartered Accountancy background, be it um, uh, any other course, you know, from you know, what, what you would have done, we ensure that the sessions really cover from the scratch. So we will try building the concept from the scratch so that there is nothing assumed that you know this and that. We will tell you all the IFRSs right from the date of birth in terms of you know what the content is. So that's something that you should certainly be assured of that we'll be covering everything and anything from the start so that you know the concept is being built up in the right way, in the right manner. Moving on, guys, you know what the syllabus areas of financial reporting is all about. We have A to E syllabus areas in financial reporting. E, of course, is the employability and technology skills, which is more to do with how you would handle this exam in the CB framework. So that's not effectively a syllabus area, but that effectively tells you that this is how you're going to be managing the exam in the computer-based environment, because that is what would be required when you would step into any organization. Effectively, all of the syllabus area content lays down or you know are there from the A to D, as in the, the, the syllabus areas. In the syllabus area, A will be talking on the conceptual and the regulatory framework, which effectively lays down the foundation on which the entire financial reporting is being built out. So we'll be talking on various concepts, various frameworks that are there, various accounting concepts, basic accounting concepts that are, that are there on which the entire framework of financial reporting or international financial reporting has been built on. So we'll be talking on that. Uh, moving on to the syllabus area B, it is more of accounting for transactions in the financial statement. Now this covers variety of IFRSs in terms of you know, what 
you may have to learn uh, let's say the the expense rec recognition the revenue recognition the the lease accounting the tax accounting and so on and so forth so all of the ifrs are being being discussed and covered at length in syllabus area b moving on to syllabus area c wherein all the ifrs that you have done from the accounting standpoint now you have to analyze that and interpret that from the financial statement standpoint. So effectively, A lays down the foundation, syllabus area A lays down the foundation, syllabus area B talks on the accounting, syllabus area C talks on the analyzing and interpretation, and syllabus area D talks on the preparation in terms of how you would prepare the financial statement, whether it is an individual financial statement or the group financial statement. That's what the overall syllabus area of financial reporting is all about. That's what syllabus area A to D really talks on from the standpoint of what is being covered over there. All righty. Moving on to the broad IFRSs. You know, these are the broad areas that are being covered in your exam. Uh, in your, uh, I would say, in all of these syllabus areas. So as I said, we'll start off with the conceptual framework in terms of, you know, what the conceptual framework is. Uh, 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 okay, uh, I have received a query. You know, give me a sec, guy. You know, uh, sign. I'll, 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 I'll talk in a while. Let me just take, you know, take you through the content, and then we'll certainly, I'll, I'll certainly try resolving your query. All right. Moving on, you know, the 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 content that is broadly covered in these IFRSs, we'll be starting on with the conceptual framework, as I said, wherein we'll lay down the foundation on which the entire financial reporting framework or the international financial reporting framework is being built on. We'll talk on the presentation of the financial statement, which is very important, you know, wherein how you would be preparing the financial statement. We'll be talking on the tangible and non-current assets in terms of you know, what uh, and how you should be accounting for the non-current asset. Very important from an examination standpoint, intangible asset and impairment of the assets. Again, very important from an examination standpoint in terms of you know, how the accounting is being done, how the disclosure is being done, how the reporting is being done and so on and so forth. Revenue accounting, no doubt, you know, it goes without saying, revenue accounting is one of the favorite, favorite area of any exam, you know, in any of the financial reporting exam. And ACC financial reporting exam is no different. Revenue accounting is heavily tested in the exam in terms of, you know, do you really know when to recognize the revenue, how to recognize the revenue and so on and so forth. So that's again, something very important. All right, moving on to the to the foreign currency accounting. Again, we'll, we'll cover that in detail in terms of, you know, what the, uh, conversions uh, of the foreign of foreign currencies is all about how you convert how you really prepare your financial statement basis that how you really deal with the financial reporting gain or losses that you may have in terms of these conversions and so on and so forth again that is being covered at length in the in, the, in, your, in your syllabus areas then the miscellaneous some of the miscellaneous topics like inventory agriculture the changes in the accounting policies, estimates, and the prior period items. And I'm sure, you know, some of you are coming from the, who are coming from the accounting and reporting background, you will be able to appreciate that all of these areas are somewhat, somewhere you would have already seen, which is a big, big, big plus for you. All that you really need to know is that IFRS may have some difference say on that. And that's what you really need to learn on and really need to dwell on in terms of, you know, what that content is all about. We'll be touching on the lease accounting, accounting for taxes, earning per share. I'm sure you know you would have seen that earlier in terms of you know what this content is all about. But we'll learn in terms of you know what IFRS really says around that. We'll talk on the event after the reporting periods, period provisions and contingencies, financial instruments, group accounting, and then of course the consolidation. We'll talk on the associates, joint ventures, joint arrangements, and the group disposals. And towards the end, we'll talk on the statement of cash flows and the analysis and interpretation. Very, very important topic. You always have a question in the exam from the analysis and interpretation in some way or the other. And of course, one question is always there from the consolidation standpoint. This is what broadly, I would say all the syllabus areas of the financial reporting exam really, really entails. Does that help guys in terms of at least giving a broad sense in terms of you know what the content is all about as far as the overall IFRSs are concerned. Moving on guys, we have uh, capabilities. Now, the reason I, I tried highlighting the syllabus areas is because 
at least by going through all of the syllabus areas, whether it is the syllabus area A, B, C, or D, or in totality, the topics that are being covered over there, at least give you some sense that what is that that you're going to be learning in this exam. So at least that would give you some perspective that, oh, oh I've seen this, oh, oh, I've done this, I've learned this, I've already gone through this, and so on and so forth. So that, give, that gives you the sense of knowing this exam better in terms of you know what is being covered over here. And of course, as I said, while you may have a plus in terms of you knowing this in advance in terms of that as a topic, important essence not to be missed over here is that IFRS is something that you need to learn as to what they really say. And there can be some differences to what you would have already learned. So you have to know those differences in order to be fully prepared in terms of handling this exam in the best possible way. And that's what we really do in our sessions so as to ensure that we are not missing on that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Moving on to the capability that is being expected out, my friend, in this exam. Now, there is certainly an expectation that is there in this exam from the standpoint of you knowing something and demonstrating that in the exam. The successful completion of this exam, you know, if it has happened with you, you should be able to, number one, discuss and apply conceptual and regulatory framework for financial reporting. Now, this is something ACCA categorically mentioned. And you know what? You really need to be smart on that because if you really expect that, that effectively means that you really need to know this before you release it for an exam. So for example, if you really expects you that you should be able to discuss and apply conceptual and the regulatory framework, then effectively, my friend, you really need to dwell on the conceptual and regulatory framework of financial reporting and be prepared in terms of you know, what examiner has been asking and that is what we have done when we do our sessions of course you practice a lot of questions in the sessions and you would see that when you start playing the sessions we also do the revision boot camp wherein we practice a lot of questions the concept the comprehensive and past examination questions over there just to give you a sense in terms of you know what examiner has been asking and testing us on just to ensure that we're not missing on that and we're not missing on the overall content coverage so that when examiner tests us, we're completely prepared for it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Moving on, the accounting that you know that you really need to understand from the transaction standpoint, again, knowing various transactions, various IFRS is something that, that is being expected out of you, and that is something that you really need to know. Analyzing and interpreting financial statement, not doing the ratio analysis, understanding what ratio means what, understanding how the figures have moved, understanding how would you interpret, how would you analyze the PL, the balance sheet, and so on and so forth is going to be of the vital importance. And examiner always tests you on this in section C. You would always see one question in section C that really talks on the analysis and the interpretation of the financial statement, which in a way I think is the most interesting topic of the financial reporting exam, because preparing the financial statement, anybody can do, but interpretation of financial statement really takes a lot, lot of toll. And the, the one who can really practice, practice and practice on that, and of course deliver on that, certainly stands apart in the exam and of course with the result. So important pieces that you should be able to analyze and interpret in terms of what is going on into the financial statement. What does that mean to the investor? What does that mean to the debtor, to the creditor, to yourself, to your uh, equity shareholders, to, of course, the, the, the overall regulators and so on and so forth? Very important and very imperative. Moving on, we'll talk on the preparation and the presentation of the financial statement in terms of you know, how you would be preparing your financial statement for single entities, for the business combination, for the group accounting, and so on and so forth, just to ensure, just to ensure that you're not missing, you're not missing on the overall consolidation as a piece. So moving on the, uh, you know, from the preparation and the presentation of financial statement, last but not the least thing is that you should be able to demonstrate your computer abilities in terms of you going through and delivering the content in the CBE exam. And that's what we've covered. We have, you know, handled questions in the CBE framework you know, how would you manage the question in the Excel? We have already demonstrated that. We would provide you the training for that also. You would see, a, you know, a session that specifically talks on in terms of how you would be managing the exam in the CB framework. We have covered that at length and you should certainly, certainly go through that, understand that, practice that before you release it for your exam. Is that clear, guys? Now, this is something, you know, every chartered accountancy student should also be 
worried about, if I may say that for the lack of better word. We as chartered accountancy students are not, are not used to handling an exam in the computer-based environment. And that's something we really need to learn. That's something we really need to practice. I'm not trying to scare you guys, my friend, but I'm only trying to tell you that what all speed breakers can come your way so that at least you can avoid that to the best extent possible. We have given a dedicated, dedicated session specifically demonstrating the the uh, content and the coverage that is there in the CB framework so that you're completely well versed with that. And of course, you can practice that, deliver that and so on and so forth. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Moving on, guys, you know, I just wanted to take you through in terms of, you know, how your financial reporting exam pattern or format is going to be because you in order to kill any exam, really do well in an exam, you really need to know as to what that exam is going to be all about. And of course, when you will understand that this is going to be it, you would understand in terms of how you would manage that. For example, in this exam, the financial reporting exam of ACCA has three sections. We have section A, section B, and section C. Section A are, is completely objective type questions wherein you would get the multiple choice questions. You may get fill in the blanks. You may get match the following and so on and so forth. But these are like objective type, binary type questions wherein there is something that is being right and there is something that is being wrong. You have to choose the right things and then move on. We have 15 objective type questions in the exam two marks each in section A, and then you have the section B, which is case study questions. You know what, this are this another way of really testing you with the objective type questions. What he'll tell you is that he'll give you three cases. He'll explain you something on those lines in terms of you know, what has happened in that case and so on and so forth. Then he would give you five objective type questions on that case. So these are like effectively the objective type questions, but they're based on specific case. So you'll get three case in the exam, and all those three cases will have five questions each. So effectively 10 marker for every case that you would have in the exam. So 15 objective type questions, section A of two marks each will give you 30 marks. Section B has three case studies having five questions each, which again has two marks each. So effectively 10 marks for every case, three case will give you 30 marks. So 30 plus 30 becomes 60 from section A and section B from objective type questions to case study questions. Is something that you'll be managing in section A and section B. Section C is a long case scenario. Now, this is something you know I, I, I somehow really relish in terms of you know what examiner really gives you in the exam because he effectively tests you on all of the areas. Long case scenarios can be you know you need to prepare the accounts in terms of consolidation. You may have to interpret a financial statement and of course prepare a cash flow statement and so on and so forth. So this section section c has two two uh, i would say questions having 20 marks each so you may have 20 marks for uh, for preparing the entire PL balance sheet or balance sheet or PL and so on and so forth you may have to do that or you may have to interpret or you may have to prepare a cash flow statement or you may have to correct the mistakes that have happened in a financial statement and prepare that again so there are a variety of questions that you may get to see in the exam, but these are like 20 marks each and you'll get two, two questions around it. So that effectively means 40 marks. So 30 plus 30, which is like section A and section B and 40 marks in section C gives you 100 marks in the exam on the whole. And you would get three hours in the exam to handle that. So effectively 180 minutes for handling 100 marks in the exam. It is very imperative and very important, my friend, that you know in terms of you know what the overall curriculum and the format of the FR exam is all about in order to ensure that you're ready and prepared and, and there from the standpoint of handling that in the exam. All right, moving on, guys. You know, I just wanted to give you a sense in terms of you know what the section A is gonna be. I've already spoken on that. Section A is having 30 marks, which is like 15 questions of two marks each and they will test you on multiple IFRSs. Many of the students, many of the students, I can tell you with my experience, many of the students, what they at times do is, they just pick and choose the topic and they do not cover the entire IFRSs. A big, big, big blunder, my friend. If you're doing that, it's gonna be a big problem. You cannot, cannot, cannot pick up a topic and leave the other one. You cannot cherry pick the topic. That's not going to be happening. You have to do all of the IFRSs because he may ask multiple, multiple IFRSs in the exam, especially when he has the option of testing you on the MCQs. 
he may test you on various IFRSs. He would not test any specific area on the whole. Very important, there should not be any cherry picking. Objective type questions can be multiple choice, fill in the blanks, match the following, and so on and so forth. I've already covered that. 15 questions, two marks each, giving you 30 marks in the exam in section A. If I talk on the section B, it has 30 marks again. Again, three cases, having 10 marks each. Effectively, three cases has, you know, five, five questions on each. You know, you get each for every case. So effectively, 15 questions you have, have to handle, which is, again, two marks each. So effectively, 30 marks for these three cases. Again, you may get an objective type questions on that, multiple choice, fill in the blanks, match the following, depending upon what you really want to ask you. But that particular set of five questions will be based on one case that will be there in the exam. And you would get three cases. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Moving on to the section C, I've already spoken on that. 40 marks, two cases, having 20 marks each, my friend. And it says, you know, subjective, a long question kind of a thing, generally tested from four areas. And I'm just giving you, you know, I would say understanding basis what I've seen over a period of time in terms of, you know, what examiner has been, has been really testing you on. You know, you may get a trial balance, PNL, statement of financial position, you know, or an IFRS related issue. He may give you a trial balance, which is, and then he'll tell you that, you know, these are the mistakes that have happened. Correct that. Prepare that again. Prepare the PNL. Prepare the statement of financial position and correct those areas or issues basis your understanding about IFRSs. So he may want you to correct something basis your right knowledge for IFRS. That's again something that you may get to see in the exam. The another one can be the group accounting wherein you may get to see a consolidation question in the exam. He'll give you, you know, X acquired Y and you have to prepare the X, Y, you know, financial statement and so on and so forth. You may get to see a cash flow statement also. He may uh, want to test your cash flow uh, I would say statement understanding in terms of, you know, how you really prepared the operating cash flows, investing cash flows, financing cash flows, and so on and so forth. He may give you a question on that. And last but not the least, I can tell you is ratio analysis in terms of interpreting what the financial statement is all about. He at times tests you very, very smartly on that. And I can tell you ratio analysis is one of the favorite examiner area and favorite of mine too, in terms of, you know, you getting really tested on in terms of how you really understand a financial statement and what you really need to do when you step into any organization. So effectively, it's a very practical topic that, that is being covered over there. And that's why I love it. And of course, you know, you would also fall in love with it uh, when you will start doing that. And of course, start going through our sessions. All right. Now, what have you got on your, on your plate? You know, so uh, the course that you have already purchased and that is there with you, you would see that, you know, our sessions are basically categorized into two important buckets. First one is that you, you would, the first thing that you would go through is the detailed video lectures that, that is available on all of the syllabus areas. And mind it, when I say all of the syllabus areas, it is the recent syllabus areas that is like from the September 2022 to June 2023 syllabus area that has been recently, recently shooted by, by ACCA. That is, that's all the changes and everything that is required is duly covered in that. And then what you really have is the comprehensive study material, which you can download and print. So you would also, you, in addition to the session that you would see, you have also already received a link, which will give you all the syllabus area sessions and the material for those sessions, which you can download, print, and have it with you. And of course, you can go through that with the sessions. These material, you know, I can, I really want to spend some time on that. The material that we have tried preparing over here essentially covers anything and everything that you need from the standpoint of clearing this exam in the best possible way. And many of the students at times really ask, do we need any other thing? Answer is, absolutely no you do not need anything what we have really really covered what we have really really created covers anything and everything that you really need we have gone through the acc website we have gone through all of the all, all of the listed publishers and of course we have understood what is being required what what is being required what is being needed to ensure that uh, you know you are not missing on anything so we have surely surely ensured that and there is no need of referring any other any other material per se for practicing question you know and many of the times students really say that that do we really need to practice more questions in addition to the sessions that we have 
you may practice more my friend we do not stop anyone practicing more but what we have covered in the revision boot camp really essentially covers anything and everything that you may need so do not do not worry uh, you know we have covered at length in terms of you know what we what you really need from the standpoint of clearing this exam all right so we have the detailed video lectures we have the competency study material then i have the revision boot camp for you in the sessions that you would see, they're categorized into two buckets. You would get video lectures and then you get revision boot camp. Revision boot camp effectively covers the exam kit. I so what friend I'm really proud of giving is that in we're not only giving the you know uh, the the real exam kit, we're effectively giving the video exam kit. So wherein teacher will come and we practice questions, including the, the concept questions, the comprehensive questions, and past examination questions, which is being solved by me, giving you all the tips and tricks that you really need in order to handle this exam question when you will see and go and sit over there in the exam room. We also cover in terms of you know, what you really need from the computer-based exam training standpoint. So there is a session that specifically talks on in terms of you know, what you really need to do in the computer-based exam framework, and of course, related guidelines that are there in relation to it of course in addition to that what you get is the 24 cross 7 you know tutor support and of course that comes in on the telegram on the whatsapp on the email you know of course you can reach out to us we'll be happy to take it on and answer that as soon as possible we also give towards the end the mock exam and the individual performance review on this is gonna be a game changer for you Handling a mock exam and of course giving it to us and of course understanding where the gap is certainly helps you in terms of understanding where you really lack on and of course you can work on that and that's something you should never 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 miss and I keep saying that like a broken record in our session that practicing question by your own hand and giving the mock exam is the game changer is the game changer please do not miss on that you have to have to do that and towards the end what you also get with our courses is the is the FinTram exam pass assurance so if god forbid you know god forbid if something doesn't go rightly for you in the exam and you are not able to clear it FinTram is is i would say somewhat confident enough of their sessions of their content that we are able to offer you an exam pass assurance because we believe the content and the uh, um, sessions that we have created are good enough for you to clear the exam. So in case you're not able to clear this for, for whatsoever reason, FedRAM would be sponsoring your next, next exam from the standpoint of giving you the coaching free of cost. So we'll give you the exam pass assurance that in case you're not able to clear it, your sessions would get extended for, you know, and of course you would not have to pay anything for the very next day, next exam. Of course, this comes up with the six months plan. Do not forget on that. And last but not the least is, you know, in case you're seeing us for the first time and you have not seen our sessions earlier, you can reach out to us. I've given you the details over here, you know, about us in terms of, you know, you reaching out to us. And of course, our website details Do come on to us and we'll be happy to help. We'll be happy to chat and we'll provide you, you know, any demo session that you may need or any content that you may need to really make your decision and really move on with us. If you also need the uh, the study plan for financial reporting, we have a classic week-wise study plan for financial reporting exam, which we would be, you know, of course, finalizing basis the changes that have come up in the recent syllabus areas, which we will be finalizing in the week next. So, in case you really need that, do reach out to us on this number, WhatsApp on this number, or reach out to us. We'll be happy to provide that uh, study plan, and you can take it on from there. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. All right. Now I'm open for any questions, guys. Anyone may have. You can chat. You can put the question on the chat, or you can, of course, uh, give a call out to me. You know, in case you want to hear it, talk with me. You just just open up and 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 open up your heart and mind. We'll be happy to happy to chat. One question that I've got from the Sai is, sir, I'm a CA final student. I'm planning to give my CA final exam in November 2022 and ACC financial reporting exam in December session. Will there be any chance of confusion in the concept while studying both at a time? Uh, okay, so Sai, uh, the way I have understood, and I'm sure you know, you would have shifted on to the new syllabus uh, pattern of the of the chartered accountancy which effectively covers the 
the indias and they are not like the erstwhile accounting standards of of uh, of india they are more like the indias now and indias are somewhat i and i i keep saying that somewhat the the child of the ifrs so you know you would see indias to be very much similar to what ifrs really says not like 100% similarity but very much similar because we have indianized that to a, to an extent but as far as the overall theme and concept is concerned the indias is very much similar to ifrs so i do not see that there is a chance of confusion there i do not see that that to be happening you still have you know once you have, would have cleared your exam uh, you still have 15 i think approx 15 days to really really go through the content and i'm sure you know while you intend to prepare it you know uh, for december you would have started at least going through the session now and you know start building up the concepts now so i don't see a confusion per se but all i can tell you is that it's not going to be cake pop for you too you have to you know considering i and i know ca final exam in terms of the content that it has it's huge in terms of the coverage that you may have over there and some of uh, the concept that you would learn in ca final will not be there in accfr exam and vice versa too so you may have to like you know run from you know pole to pillar in terms of covering everything and anything but confusion per se you may not have it i don't see confusion per se but you have to of course spend good amount of time in terms of covering both the areas does that help sai i am i able to help you in terms of resolving any concern queries that you had all right good uh, thank you sai uh, krishna says sir our exam question same in every country yes my friend it is same in every country as far as acc is concerned uh, you i don't know which set or you know which which exam you you're talking about but you know questions are same so there is no difference as such anybody else guys anybody else has any issue any topic anything that i can help you out with all right sai says in how many hours does fr course complete so if i really uh, talk on uh, the overall number of hours sai i think it will be approximately 50 to 60 hours that you really need to clear this uh, the entire course and of course some more hours to practice questions but approximately 60 hours kind of a thing that you that you really need so if you uh, i'm not too sure if you have already taken the session from us but if you would have seen the session you know they're like first uh, the syllabus series sessions and you have the revision boot camp section a section b section c questions and then you have uh, the portion practicing sessions and so on and so forth so effectively if you total it out it will be approximately 60 hours 50 to 60 hours kind of thing and maybe 10 15 more hours for you to really practice some of them and i think you're able to you're good to go to hit the exam all right sign thank you anybody else guys anybody anything that you may have guys speak up speak up speak up this is the time to hit the exam in the best possible way which is better bpp or kaplan fintram is better my friend fintram is better you know i'm from fintram i would always say fintram is better we have have really taken the best of the best world to end you know to ensure that uh, you are able to get the best content and that's what fintram really offers but if you really want me to choose between the BP and Cap, BPP and Kaplan, I would go and choose Kaplan if you want me to do that. But nowhere I would say that Fintram's content is, is, is not, not comparable. What we have created is the best of the all of the worlds to ensure that you only get to see and practice what is needed, not giving you more, not giving you less. Smriti says, what is the fee structure, Smriti? I would say, Smriti, reach out to fintram.com. I have given the number. I have given the, the website details. They'll be happy to help and take you through what the overall content is all about and, of course, what the fee structure is all about. Thank you, Smriti. Thank you, everyone. You know, the, the only thing I would, I would you know, lastly call out is that the reason we are able to offer such, such good results is, is, is all because of your effort and belief in us, belief in us. You know, keep believing us and, you know, we will certainly try giving you the best of the content possible and, of course, best of the support possible to ensure that you're able to come up with the flying, flying colors. And, of course, when you clear it, you would certainly owe me a cup of coffee and we'll sit somewhere and have that and enjoy that. Now, that is what I wanted to cover, my friend. Thank you very much for joining in. I'll see you there in our sessions when we'll take on, take on the topics. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you.